Hello everyone, my name is Ronan. I work here at the Colony Public Library. Today we're continuing our video series on air and weather and meteorology. Do you remember what meteorology means? So a meteorologist is a scientist who studies air and the atmosphere and weather. So we're going to be meteorologists today and we're going to see what happens when that warm air rises up into the atmosphere. So if you remember from our previous videos, we learned how air behaves in hot and cold temperatures. So in warm temperatures, air expands, it pushes out, and in cold temperatures, air condenses and it comes inside tight against itself. And we also saw what happens when those warm and cold air masses meet. So if you remember from our video with the blue and warm, blue and red water, excuse me, the cold air mass pushed the warm air mass high up against the atmosphere. So they came together, the cold air mass stayed below, pushed the warm air mass high. So now in this experiment, we're going to see what happens, what happens to that red, that warm air mass as it rises up into the atmosphere. So what happens to that warm air after it rises, after that cold air mass pushes it up? Do you think it's hot or cold way up high in the atmosphere? It's really, really cold. So think about what happens when that air hits that cold temperature. What happens to air when it gets cold? It condenses, right? It squeezes up nice and tight against itself. But what does that mean? What happens when it condenses? What does it look like? So that's what we're going to see in our experiment today. We're going to see what that looks like when that warm air mass rises up into the cold atmosphere and condenses. So let's get started on our experiment. So today you will need a jar, like an empty jam jar or a pickle jar or something. You'll need a bag of ice, just in a regular Ziploc bag. You'll need some matches. You'll also need an adult to help you with these matches, okay? So please have someone help you with the matches. And you'll also need some almost boiling hot water. So again, have someone help you get the water ready, either in a kettle or a pot on a stove or something. So let's get ready on our experience. All right, so I'm gonna pour this really hot water into the jar. And we can see right off the bat that it's evaporating. We can see a little bit of vapor. You might not be able to see it in the video, but maybe when you're doing this at home, you can see a little bit of vapor coming off of it. So have you heard of that word evaporation? So that's when a liquid is so hot that it turns into a gas. So that's what we need to do for our experiment today is we need really hot, warm water so that we can have warm water vapor. All right, what we also need is a match. So have an adult do this part for you, okay? Don't try to do it yourself. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light the match and drop it into the jar. Because what we also need is more heat, but we also need some particles from like the soot and the dust in the air. So we, that's what the match will provide. So let's go ahead and get the match um, lit and dropped into the jar. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna drop this in here, kind of get the warm air situated in there, and then I'll drop it into the jar, and then very quickly put our bag of ice over the top of the jar. So we can really start to see what's happening right away, right? Can you see all of that visible vapor inside the jar? What does that look like to you? To me, it kind of looks like a cloud, right? That's really interesting. So what we're doing is we've recreated a small model of what happens in the atmosphere. We have our warm water vapor evaporating from the warm water. We have some more heat from the match as well as some particles from the match and the soot. And we have our cold ice. So this is representing the cold uh, temperatures of the high up atmosphere. So once that warm water vapor rises and mixes with some of the particles in the air and it hits that cold temperature in the atmosphere, it condenses really nice and tight and it makes a cloud, it made a cloud in a jar. Have you ever wanted to touch a cloud? Well, what we can do is we can lift the top of the ice and that cloud will poof, poof out of the jar. We can feel what it looks, what it feels like, but we actually can't feel it at all. It's just vapor. It's just like a gas. So if we were way up high in the atmosphere, we wouldn't be able to touch a cloud. It would just, poof, fall right through. So as we saw, we recreated all the components that is needed to make a cloud. We had our warm water vapor, the particles in the air, and the cold temperatures of the high up atmosphere. So that's what's needed to make a cloud because what happens is all those dust particles are floating up into the air and a little water vapor molecule sticks onto the particles and then more and more and more stick on as it hits that cold temperature and it combines into one big cloud. And that's what we did in our jar experiment. We could see that happen right in front of our eyes. So those are the components needed to make a cloud, but that doesn't mean that all clouds are the same, right? 
you might have noticed that yourself. Some clouds are fluffy, some clouds are really thin, some are really big, like for a thunderstorm. So now it's your turn to go outside, make some cloud observations. You can write down your observations, you can even draw what the cloud looks like, and then come back the next day and then see what the clouds look like the next day, or even the next hour, because sometimes they can change within a day. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed our weather experiments today. We'll see you next time in our next video. Bye!